the players don't want to play. You're going to make $70 million and you can't play basketball three or four days a week? Bird played 81 games a year. Bad back. Will played every minute of every game every year. Guys today are softer than funeral home music. They don't have a load management problem. What they have is a greed problem. When we think about load management, we think about Kawhi Leonard, the Anthony Davises. We're looking at a Zion Williamson, a Joel Embiid. We got star players missing huge amounts of time. Kyrie Irving's made it a, it's like a vocation out personally. Reason. They are giving players days off that truly isn't needed and it allows them to decondition themselves. I don't know why the league schedules back-to-backs. Of the 22 leading scorers in the NBA, almost all of them have missed double figures. If you 80% said you got to play. Back in 1962, Will Chamberlain played an NBA record 48 and a half minutes a night. In the 20 years he played, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar averaged 78 games a season. Larry Bird suffered a back injury in 1985 that would later ruin his career, but he still played all 100 games of the Celtics championship team the very next year. And after suffering a broken foot in his second season, Michael Jordan would miss just seven more games in his entire Chicago Bulls career. But then, enter the term load management. As you can see, when taking a look at the game's best throughout the years, every NBA All-Star from 1960 to 2020, the data here proves that a clear, clear pattern emerges. Up until the turn of the century, we were seemingly fine, with the 1980s seeing their All-Stars legitimately play an average of 77 games a year, truly giving credit to the toughness of that time period. Looking at this chart, we can see that last season, All-Stars played almost 10 games less on average than the NBA All-Stars did in the 1960s, a statistic that on paper is startling. And the reason for this number is in part due to load management. Stars are sitting out of national television games. Fans are driving thousands of miles only to be disappointed and even the players themselves are calling each other out. And what's also important important to note here is that the stakes are high. There is no denying hard numbers, and the numbers from the NBA All-Star Game tell us one hard truth. Fan interest was down significantly. So what's up, Mike here, and I want to ask you a question. Do you think load management is actually needed? Because if we are being honest with ourselves, how is it possible that Wilt Chamberlain was able to average over 48 minutes a game in the 60s, but NBA stars now are not able to play over 34? I think we all know that the game does put a lot more stress on your body right now, but with that in mind, is it really that much more stress? And asking what I think is a more important question, after guys like Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar paved the way for NBA players now to become celebrities and get paid $40 million a year if they are amazing, is it necessary that they are sitting? Because if it is not, doesn't that seem unjustifiable? So in one second, we will jump into this, but guys, for over a year, I have been creating a new channel and it is finally launched. That is right, Coors Light is launched. On this new channel, I am going to be posting more NBA content, three to four videos per week. Every single video is going to have four two-minute segments. Here's a segment from the first one. Was Wilt's 100-point game completely fake? That is right, you heard it here as we dive into video footage of Wilt Chamberlain. I just want to present to you the facts of Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game, and they are that number one, there is no video footage of this game. The footage we are currently watching is just Wilt being amazing in general. Number two, there were only 4,124 people in attendance of this game. And here's where things get even stranger. Because fact number three about this game, there was no actual audio recording. I hope you enjoy the new channel. I hope you subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you are there for a new grind. I'm so excited to show you guys Coors Light. But for now, let's jump into this video. The term load management was introduced into the NBA with the 2018 Philadelphia 76ers and Joel Embiid. And in the very first ESPN article mentioning it, we have the words, something called load management. Oh, Sixers fans think the excuse to sit and bead is a load of something, for sure. So as you could see, immediately there was hesitation here, but then came the 2019 season. And that is when Kawhi Leonard led the Toronto Raptors to an NBA championship after he was load managed. The NBA is a copycat league, and let's be honest here, when the Raptors won in this way, a new strategy emerged. Merged. If you sit your star enough, in theory, it does make sense that he will be a lot fresher for the playoffs. And then from there,
player, he'll get you that NBA title, the ultimate goal. Except the thing is, is that even true? Wasn't LeBron James never load managed in his life? It feels like he's done just fine. Is it possible that just injury prone players such as Kawhi Leonard or Joel Embiid benefit from more rest while other players don't even benefit at all? I wanted to find out, so I collected a lot of data here. If the data ends up not being there in favor of load management, I want to demand answers because the effects on the game have certainly been seen. Right now, we have star players who are playing less than ever before, who are also being paid more than ever before. And here is what NBA All-Star Paul George has had to say. They think by giving us time off, it's helped managing our bodies. But in honesty, I think it's just making us weaker as players uh, without, without putting that load and strain to our bodies. Then here, as you see, we have every single MVP with their games played and minutes per game during their MVP season throughout all of NBA history. And sure, there are a few outliers, Bill Walden certainly being one of them. But overall, history has pretty much remained the same. NBA MVPs play a lot of games and they play a lot of minutes. That is still mostly true about the minutes, but now looking at games played, we can see an obvious, obvious downturn. All it took was one James Harden season. And now the new norm is that 74 or less games played is more than good enough to get it done. It's more than good enough to be the MVP. I do not have a problem with this every now and then, but personally, on a consistent basis, I do want my MVPs on the court playing. Taking a look on the flip side though, we have heard that the science is there. To me personally though, isn't the science just kind of common sense? Of course, if you sit out an extra 20 games and an extra 10 minutes more per game, you are going to put less miles on your legs during the regular season. And so then in theory, you'll be more rested for the playoffs. However, Kawhi Leonard is the face of load management and he literally suffered an ACL tear in the playoffs after a load management season. That is not exactly the best starting evidence, I will say. And because this is a very recent thing, I want to know, is this working? So let's dive back into those all-stars. The term load management became real in 2018. So let's take a look from 2018 to 2020 at every single all-star. In those five years, which all-stars that ended up playing in the playoffs sat the most games? Did those all-stars end up having more success? And what's happening to them now? Well, since the 2018 season, Kawhi Leonard played an average of just 56.3 games a season. But as we saw, he did lead the Raptors to the 2019 NBA championship, the ultimate goal. He and the Clippers are also there right now for a playoff run. Moving past Kawhi though, and comparing other NBA stars, a huge pattern is here after I collected all of this data. In the last five seasons, out of any player who was named to the all-star team at least three times, the guys who played the least amount of games on average are names such as Anthony Davis and LeBron James, who both did win a title. Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, who both have won championships. And Jimmy Butler, who has a reputation for being someone who can step up amazingly in the playoffs. I would say this was a coincidence if on the other side, if on the top end of this list, we didn't have to go 10 names down to find the first all-star champion, who is Chris Middleton, who has currently been plagued with a ton of injuries. So overall, what we can take away from all of this is that we are not crazy. It is very apparent that recently players have been sitting out way more often, and that has been very frustrating for a lot of fans, especially because as you can see in this video, things such as all-star voting certainly have not been affected. And the same goes with MVP voting. If you're a player and you're still getting named an all-star after sitting out this many games, if you're still in the MVP voting after sitting out 10 games, then you're probably going to take a few extra nights off. The important thing always here was, is this working? And the answer we got was that it has worked for essentially every single NBA champion of the last five years. 2022 Golden State, we have Steph Curry. 2021 Bucks. And what we have found out overall in this video is that there are unfortunately no examples of guys that do play a ton of games having a ton of success in the playoffs recently. While on the flip side, the guys that have sat out have had playoff success. I want to know what you think about this. After the data has been presented to you, do you still think that players are sitting out too much? Because honestly, a championship is an all-in type move. And so yes, when looking back, championships are definitely worth it. But in the moment, there's a lot of noise for a reason. Fans are frustrated. I'm interested to see what is going to happen. And also, I'm very hopeful that you are enjoying Core's Light. Did you click that link yet? Again, new channel, three to four videos a week. Every single video is going to have four two-minute segments. Trust me when I say it is going to be an incredible time. Make sure to go over there and subscribe. Thank you so much for supporting here. If you're already subscribed here, if you're already subscribed over at Coors Light, just in general, you're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have a
an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.